Hey everyone, welcome back to Bethany Urban Farm. This is Coral, and today I'm going to be taking you through our house tour and our late summer garden tour. Um, we live in a rental house in Victoria, British Columbia. Um, so you'll get a feel for how we decorate our rental home and how we do, how we've set up our temporary rental garden space in the middle of the season. So this is our kitchen. This is my partner's favorite part of the house. Um, our kitchen in our last house, which was shared with three other roommates, was tiny. There was probably five square feet of counter space, so this was just amazing. Um, this is our pantry. I love the double doors on this pantry. We're trying to get it organized, but you know, just moving in and getting everything settled, it's still a little bit messy. This is Theo's um, healthy snack drawer. So Theo is our niece who lives with us and her mom as well. Those drawers set up for her to just come in and grab a healthy snack or grab a treat whenever she wants. This is an acorn squash that I grew last year. That's, I don't know if we're ever gonna use it. Um, this is our little um, spice and oil cupboard and our beverage cupboard, baking supplies are up there. is our kettle. I love this kettle. <laughs> um, and this is my coffee grinder. I spent so long trying to find a good coffee grinder that was a burr grinder for less than $200 um, and automatic and I will link this one below. It is amazing. This is my coffee cupboard with a lot of JJ Bean from Vancouver. <laughs> our mugs and then our extra tea up top. Yorkshire Gold is our go-to tea. Got our compost bin, sink, pretty standard. Oh, this is the spice drawer. Check that out. So these are labeled from, they used to be in a revolving, revolving spice rack, but then I thought, oh, the labels work perfectly if you put them in a drawer. Um, and I have a little drawer um, organizer thing that they sit in that's sticky so they don't roll around. Um, I have lids in a drawer, which is a great tip. And then I have all of our saucepans that fit perfectly in that drawer. I am so happy with how many drawers are in this kitchen. This is definitely like my favorite part about the kitchen is how many drawers. Oh, and this is where I can watch hummingbirds from the kitchen window. Oh, having a dishwasher for the first time in like six years is amazing. So in this drawer we have our cutting boards and an awesome strainer and then baking pans in there. I like the strainer because it collapses, so it fits really well in that drawer. All of the utensils, that's Rachel's domain. And then our Tupperware, I love our glass um, Pyrex food storage containers. They're awesome. Then these just bits and bobs that it's, it's a challenge to find places. Ooh, garlic that I grew in my garden in Vancouver, and then I harvested it right before we left. And this is our fish named Dot. The floors are also really nice. They're, um, they're vinyl, but they, they're really, they feel kind of like warm stone. Oh, and finally we have the beautiful dishes that are only our nice dishes and not 7,000 dishes from an assortment of roommates. I also love having plates in a drawer so we can more easily see them. This is Theo's drawer, it's a bit chaotic. And that's the kitchen. So this is the dining room. We got this dining table and chairs from Facebook Marketplace, um, and it's from one of the oldest furniture stores in Canada, which is pretty cool. My vegetable poster and this herb poster that I got from the Victoria Botanical Gardens. And then we have my ficus um, elastica and this prayer plant. And then you have the deck that opens right onto the dining room, which is one of my favorite parts about the house. I'm really proud of this gallery wall. I kind of agonized over it for a while, but it was one of the things that I was really looking forward to doing in this house. And I used command strips for every single picture on this wall. I even used command strips for the decorative plate. This plate is really beautiful. It's from the Kew Gardens in England. And then I have my Audubon bird watching calendar hanging on a command hook. But yeah, the, the pictures have held really well with, um, I used medium and large command strips to hang them. The only one that's fallen down so far is that pink floral one to the right hand side of the window. That one fell down and actually the glass broke, but I just hung it back up without glass um, and it stayed really well because it's much lighter. So that one was a little bit too heavy. So if you're worried about it, I would probably weigh the pictures to be exact. 
I have this window bird feeder to have the chickadees come feed. Um, we have chestnut back chickadees here, which are a little bit different from the chickadees in Vancouver. And yeah, they took about a month to find the feeder, which is pretty normal whenever you put up a new feeder, especially if it's really close to the house and it's not one they're, they're used to, they can take a while to find it. But I really enjoy seeing them feed. And here is the deck. So I'll be taking you through some of the plants in this video as well, kind of doing my late summer garden tour all in one. This is my um, hyssop. The bees have been loving it. This is my one of my crocosmias. And a gladiolus papilio is this lovely purple and yellow gladiolus. Some chocolate cosmos, one of my favorites for like mid-summer to um, first frost, they'll keep blooming. Here's my Monardella macrantha and some thyme that I got at a corner store and it's amazing. Um, this is a, a nectar blue or nectar bloom, I think nectar blue, a salvia. It's a tender salvia. It's hardy to about zone 8, which is my zone, so um, it's a bit borderline hardy, so you have to keep it dry over the winter. Some liatris. I love liatris. I have some Mexican torch, sun, uh, Mexican sunflowers in that pot as seedlings, but they are growing really slowly. And then I also have some agastache or hyssop uh, drying on that baking tray. So I usually leave it to dry in the sun for about two or three days. Here is my little hummingbird wind chime and my hummingbird feeder and another little wind chime that I picked up. I know wind chimes are kind of polarizing. I love wind chimes. My partner doesn't really like them. Um, this is my Spigelia. It's a really cool hummingbird plant that's native to the east coast of North America. And then my pineapple lily. And some cosmos. I love the cosmos, like seeing their colors change, and I just kind of let them die. They're really bright magenta when they first bloom, and then they fade to a really beautiful, like, silk. Like, vintage tea rose silk. Some weird Beckias that did not enjoy, did not appreciate being transplanted from Vancouver. But they're, they're doing okay. And then these, I actually unintentionally brought home from the nursery that I worked in. Um, last year, they are asters. They're Frick Arts Monk asters. And then down there, you can see my tomatoes, my hammock, my swing that I'm so excited about. I just put that swing up. I've wanted a swing for 20 years. And then I have some more plants growing in grow bags. I'll go down there after and uh, show you what's growing in there. And these are the Gary Oak trees. So Gary Oaks are actually very special to Vancouver Island. They used to um, cover the whole West Coast, and they have a beautiful relationship with camas lilies um, and a lot of other species um, that have now become endangered, like western bluebirds, because of the eradication of Gary Oaks. Um, but there are so many Gary Oaks in Victoria, which is really special. So here are some peppers. Uh, my peppers are really puny and a little roselle. I mean, I just, they've gone through so much getting brought on a ferry and then transplanted like four times. Um, but they're in the sun. They're doing pretty well, but they're tiny, teeny tiny. And my little herb garden for Rachel to use in her cooking. And this is Theo's trampoline she uses for um, working on her gross motor development and she's really liking it. She loves being able to go out on the deck and stretch her legs. And here are my little globe lights that I just turned on. And the neighbor's yard on the left there is like so beautiful. And I kind of, it's kind of a feature of the house is looking into their property. And then yeah, coming back into the house. I also love these dressers we used to have in our bedroom, but our bedroom's too small for them in this house. So I put them in the um, dining room to kind of um, hold just bits and bobs of art supplies in the first drawer. There are pens and paints and stuff like that. And then in the second drawer, there is paper. And the third drawer, we have completed art that I want to keep and um, some bigger papers and canvases and some sticker books. 
And on the left-hand side, there's more grown-up stuff. The first drawer has office supplies. I spent a couple hours um, a couple days ago organizing all these drawers because I had just been dumping stuff in. And now that it's organized, it's amazing. It's so handy to have this storage and kind of be able to hide everything that's not super pretty looking, <laughs> um, but also have it readily available. So this is the living room. This is the other gallery wall that I put up with some pictures of me and my brother and my parents um, when we were little. Some Totoro art, picture of Theo, a parrot that I took a picture of at the Victoria Butterfly Gardens. Here is Neil Gaiman, my Dracaena fragrance. And this desk I love, it's from actually my mom's partner. Um, when he was a little kid, he had it and it's just so beautiful. And I love having a table behind the couch here. And then we actually put that little um, electronic keyboard on for Theo, it's the perfect height for her to play on. And this is east facing, so it gets beautiful morning light. And um, these bookshelves, I actually, um, they're just Ikea bookshelves. I think one of them is a Billy and one of them is, I think, a Grisby. And I actually just um, painted them in white chalk paint and they look so much better than an Ikea finish. And they were also like $15 each because I got them secondhand and they were like a gross brown color. Here's Theo's little art corner with some books. Um, Mr. Got to Go and What's in the Cave were my favorite books when I was a toddler. And then we have some beautiful um, Northwest Coast indigenous art books as well. my spider plant and my tapestry that I got from an estate sale for like $15 and I love it so much. It works perfectly above the fireplace. And here's my Monstera and Rachel's nerdy um, superhero fandom collection, our Millennium Falcon and her palm cross. This is her prayer chair. It used to be in our closet actually when we lived in Vancouver. Um, and these are my little, my little cactus garden basking in the sun. The swingback chair I got on Craigslist for like $20. I love it. My fiddle leaf fig and Neil Gaiman and some more plants on that side table. The side tables are mostly taken up by plants. You don't get to put your coffee on them. This uh, couch my um, sister-in-law got for free. Um, and I just threw the cushions in the wash with some OxyClean and they came out beautifully. And this rug I got from Wayfair, I'll link it down below, it's, it's really great. It's not the best quality, but it was only about $200 and you know, we have a, we have a five-year-old, so I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a rug that would probably get chocolate milk spilled all over it. But yeah, I'm really happy with the living room, how it turned out. This is Theo's princess bedroom. I painted these walls in the color of her choice. We're gonna have to paint them back to white when we leave. And I made this canopy for her out of some fabric that I bought from the fabric store for about $30, which was more expensive than I anticipated. But yeah, did that with a hula hoop. And this is a Melissa and Doug fairy castle um, doll's house that I, I really wanted her to get a doll's house because she will just play in that doll's house for hours all on her own. And I got it on Craigslist for about $20. Um, this I got the idea from Pinterest to have her princess dresses and her fairy wings lined up and she loves them. Some more little fairy princess shelves, some stuffed toys in this crate, and then some little baskets for all of her thousands of tiny, tiny princesses and dress-up items. <laughs> and I got her this guitar as well from Craigslist for Christmas last year because she loves playing guitar. Her dress is hanging up in here and then we also have her princess dresses, more princess dresses because she has a lot of princess dresses. And then on this side, we actually have a Ikea shoe organizer that I have all of her wands in because, you know, you need wand storage and her Barbies, which kind of looks creepy, but it works really well, so. So this is our bedroom. We keep it pretty minimal um, other than Rachel's superhero wall with all of her su superhero posters. My favorite part is the view into the neighbor's property.
This is our pothos named Bart. This is a painting from one of our favorite Instagram artists. And our bed, um, this duvet cover is from Ikea. I love it. So in the fall garden, I have these black Spanish radishes. I planted these about two weeks ago. And a blue cocoa bean, which is from the local farm near us. Um, and I've never seen it before, so I thought I'd give it a try and hopefully it produces before the first frost. We have some dill getting its first true leaves and some cucumbers. This one got dampening off, um, but that's okay. We still have two more and then some Malabar spinach coming up. I don't know if this will have time to produce, but fingers crossed. Um, th these are all Theo's um, bath toys that she likes to play with um, in her little water bucket in the yard. In this pot, we have um, Red Ace and Early Wonder beets and kohlrabi coming up. I kind of planted them in concentric circles, so I have like beets on the inner circle and then kohlrabi on the outer circle. We'll see how that goes. I have a lot less space here. I basically just have grow bags currently. Um, this one is going to have tricolor zucchini popping up. It hasn't uh, germinated yet, but fingers crossed it'll germinate soon. And then in this one, we have salad and carrots. Um, my plan is that the carrots obviously will be growing underground and the, the um, salad has really shallow roots, so those will be able to grow together. Um, and then obviously the, the salad will be harvested um, much quicker than the carrots. Here are my moonshadow hyacinth beans. These got pretty stunted um, and then obviously had to be transplanted, which they don't like, um, all the way from Vancouver. But the new growth is looking really awesome on these, so hopefully they will be producing pretty soon. And then here is some um, red Russian kale, uh, again in these concentric circles. Um, kale, baby bok choy, and purple sprouting broccoli. This is an, an anise hyssop hummingbird mint, super beautiful, and I just made my first cup of tea out of drying the flowers and then making tea with them, and it was delicious. It was like fruity, licorice-y, minty. It was great. Cosmos are doing wonderful. The anemones are starting. So this foliage um, got a bit of transplant shock when I transplanted these from Vancouver, but then you can see the new foliage coming up is beautiful. Some more anemones planted in here. And then we have some Verbena bonariensis. And then this is kind of my nursery bed where I'm putting things that I don't have a spot for yet. Um, because it's been, it's been challenging. I'm currently talking with the landlord to kind of figure out, you know, like what we can do for installing some garden beds. Um, but he's not too keen on them, uh, which is okay. And I mean, we don't know how long we're going to be staying in this house. So grow bags are a little bit, um, they make a, a lot more sense for if you're staying in a place temporarily. So here are my tomatoes. Um, I mixed up all the labels when I was transplanting these, um, but this is definitely a Dr. Witchie's. It's got some fruit set on there. All the fruit is really late on my tomatoes this year, but I've spoken to some other people in the Vancouver and Victoria area, and they also say that their tomatoes are also really far behind. So that made me feel a little bit better. Some blueberries. And these are in uh, 10 gallon grow bags with a combination of sea soil and cocoa core. Another Dr. Witchies with some good fruit setting there. Now this one, I think this one is sweet aperitif. Um, it has so many tomatoes set on it right now. This is definitely the most prolific. Like, just check that out. It's amazing. So I'm really excited for that to all ripen. And then this one is a sun sugar. Got some orange fruit there. It is so delicious and really healthy. I mean, all of the plants are really healthy this year. 
and see there's like no sign of disease or sickness. Um, now this one, I'm not sure if this one is a cherry or saladette tomato or if it's my um, orange strawberry ox heart because it kind of looks like an ox heart but they're pretty small um, and they're kind of like held like cherry tomatoes would be held so we'll see what they um, what they ripen like what color they ripen to but there's tons of big fruits on there as well like big for cherry tomatoes small for regular tomatoes got another blueberries this one, I'm pretty sure, is another sun sugar. And this is a Paul Robeson. I was really sad because I just saw this yesterday. Really sad. So I think I'm going to bring it inside to let it ripen, but I don't even know if it's going to be edible. Yeah, I was really sad because this is like the one Paul Robeson, I think. And uh, he hasn't, he's kind of puny. Oh, here's some more flowers. Oh, this is going to be a this is going to be a big honking tomato. That fused blossom. Well, I doubt that that will be able to set fruit and ripen before the first frost um, at the end of October, early November, but fingers crossed. Again, another sun sugar here. This one I think is Reason Straub or Giant Bunches of Grapes, another cherry tomato. Yeah, and that's the tomatoes. So we have 11 tomatoes here. I hope you enjoyed seeing our new house and the late summer garden. Um, I'm looking forward to making a lot more videos in this home and showing you different um, tips and tricks for a rental home and growing a garden in a rental home. Uh, be well, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.